With that down, let's move on to main topic number three. And our third main topic today gets submitted into us by Kyle Arking, who writes, Hey, John, have you heard about Stephen Amell's recent frustrated comments about Crisis and how his death scene was shot without some of the actors? As a loyal Arrow fan since season one, I feel like these last couple of episodes have been handled very poorly, especially the Arrow and the Canaries episode. What do you think? All right. Thanks a lot for sending that in, man. And look, just full disclosure, as a longtime fan of the annual Arrow crossover event uh, stuff that they do every year, I was not a fan of Crisis on Infinite Earths. I, I didn't think it was very good. It's the first time I didn't think they did it very well. Um. And so Stephen Amell was on, I believe it was he was on Michael Rosenbaum's podcast, and they talked about his death scene and all that kind of stuff. And did he say something that made it sound like he was really frustrated? Yeah, this is what Stephen Amell had to say. He said, meanwhile, because it goes on to talk about how in his death scene, a lot of the actors weren't there and he was actually talking to reference tennis balls. And then they put in the actors later. He said, meanwhile, the effing green arrow was lying on a gurney trying to deliver his lines to something other than a fucking tennis ball. So there are lots of scenes where I'm acting and there just aren't other actors there. And that is just not an acceptable way of creating the best product from my perspective. All right. So clearly those are frustrated sounding words. And a lot of people are, are talking about, did you hear how upset Stephen Amell was by all this kind of stuff? And I get it because you read that quote. And it does sound like he's pretty upset. However, what isn't being addressed in a lot of this stuff is the fact that he also mentions in the piece itself and in the same interview that he doesn't blame anybody for it because a lot of it was scheduling. A lot of it, they said, was the fact that the other actors had to be on set at different places and they had over the call times the other day and it was just not practical to have them in there. Then he goes out of his way to say, look, there, it really wasn't anybody's fault. I think he was just frustrated that that it happened, you know, like sometimes you can stub your toe. It's nobody's fault. You can't blame anybody. You're just mad that it happened, you know? And while I would like to sit here and jump on the poo poo on crisis on infinite earths bag wagon, the reality is this doesn't, this isn't as bad as just reading. It makes it sound. He understood it was nobody's fault. It was just a situation circumstances. He wished it could have been done better. He's not happy with the way that it turned out, but I think he expressed it in the right way. So I really don't think there's a lot here to talk about personally. I don't know, Aaron, you have been, you are in the Arrow universe. You were on Flash. You've been on many TV series and stuff like that. Uh, I'm sure there are times that you've not been able to shoot under the most ideal circumstances. Absolutely. You hear a comment like this. Can you relate with it? Do you see where he's coming from? What are your thoughts? I would file this under things you probably should bitch to your friends about, but not <laughs> on a national or a international platform. Um, I really want it because my initial thing was, wow, he kind of sounds that that's I, I had some thoughts about it. So I said, all right, let me let me read the entire interview. I don't know if maybe we read different articles, but I did not read anywhere where he was saying, hey, it's nobody's fault. These things happen. Brushing it off. I, I felt like, in fact, reading the whole like more of the interview made it sound even worse because I also I watched the death scene and here's the thing when I was working on the flash as block by the way who apparently is still in the hospital recovering <laughs> um so if you guys want to bring block back I'm, I'm okay with that um you know I remember being on set and them talking about crisis and what it, you know how challenging it is for crisis. Not the actors talking about this. This is like production and me thinking in my head logistically how do you combine all of these shows with different contracts and then you have, you know, Lucifer flying in from California and uh, managing that. It is a logistical nightmare um, having to figure out how to do all of these things simultaneously. And with that comes a certain amount of you just got to let it go and just go, all right, fine. This is just what has to happen in order for us to make this possible. Um, and there are many, many, many times that the lead actors, you know, I've been working and it's the end of the night and I know the lead actor has an entire day the next day and they go, hey, Aaron, do you mind if this person leaves early and we can have someone else deliver lines? You just go, yeah, absolutely. I also get it that it's his death scene. So he <laughs> wanted, you know, to have, but also he only referenced that the Flash and Canary were, 
you know, were the ones that left early. But there were like seven other actors in that scene. There were a lot of other people there. Maybe they released everybody. I don't know. But he also, you know, uh, speaking of James Marsden, I mean, here's James Marsden doing an entire film that he's starring in where he's talking to a tennis ball. Right. You know, you talk to any of the cast of Avatar or, you know, talk to Chris Pratt about his experience in Jurassic World and Jurassic Park. Anyone who's worked on green screen, their entire job is acting with a tennis ball. So, Steve, sorry that you had to do one scene working with a tennis ball, but like I and also he does go on in that same interview to say that the only reason he came back for season eight was for the money. So I'm like, dude, you just admitted the only reason he said I was out at season seven and they came to me and they showed me the number if I did 10 more episodes and it would be fiscally irresponsible. I'm quoting direct quote. I, it would be fiscally irresponsible for me to turn down season eight. So well, yes, it's a job. I did it. I mean, we all do it for, for it's a job. Right. That's so if There's it's a job, then lay there, talk to your fucking tennis ball and collect your paycheck. Okay, okay, That's what on. I'm saying. But he's That's done what it I'm for saying. Eight years and this was the end of the arrow character, I, the character that the whole reason the arrow universe exists this is because of that character and they've never done it a certain way and then all of a sudden for his death scene i mean i, no, I get it but here's the thing also when he's dying he is literally looking up and he's almost like like he's not even really lucid in that moment and he's saying these things it's almost like you know auntie m and you were there and oh and you were there and you were there you don't need another actor to be able to say that and after seven eight seasons of doing that character if all of that isn't in you and you have to have the actual person there you know i i, I just i i feel like fine say it in your say it in your living room with your friends don't say that and also i do find it really interesting that he, right after he said these things he had to end the interview because he had a panic attack and it makes me kind of wonder did you all of a sudden hear the things that were coming out of your mouth and realize that you weren't just hanging out with your buddy mike rosenbaum you were actually saying it to a wide audience I don't know. I felt like it was just, again, it was one of those things that it's just like, dude, it just, that those are the kind of comments that I feel make people look at actors and go, oh, you're so fucking privileged, you know? Like, but I mean, there are, because also think about the, the problems for so many people had those actors stayed there for the extra half hour or hour the the amount sure, of I money mean, he wasn't he wasn't going like he did say in the interview he did say it was circumstances it was nobody's fault like i understood that but you got to understand too like Stephen amell has always been very let's say um open about when he's had for, i remember when it was when season three of era was on i had Stephen amell he came in into the studio and we mm -hmm. sat down we were talking about season three and they had just announced, like they were just launching the Flash show. And Warner Brothers kind of trampled on the momentum of that news by then announcing Ezra Miller and all that kind of stuff. And I remember on the show, in the like right in the heyday of Arrow, Stephen Amell was like, yeah, that wasn't a good move by Warner Brothers. He was talking about his bosses. He was talking openly about his frustrations. Mm -hmm. So it's it really wasn't a new thing for that. So the question I have for everybody else is, have you had a chance to see and read these comments? Do you see them a certain way? Do you see them another way? Like, what are your thoughts on it? I didn't make a lot out of it. Some other people, maybe like Aaron, maybe see a little bit more into it. But what do you guys think? I want to know. Jump down to the comment section below and let me know your thoughts. All right.